Today we will demonstrate the correct procedure for disassembling, inspecting, and reassembling your SNC Load Buster Load Brake Tool. The Load Buster Tool should be inspected every 1500 to 2000 operations, or according to your company's inspection practices. This procedure is intended to be performed indoors at a well-lighted workbench. Recommended personal protective equipment for this job includes a pair of safety glasses and nitrile gloves. Consult your safety team for further information. You will need a variety of tools, including a 7 16 inch combination wrench, a 5 32 inch Allen key, the SNC spanner wrench, part number NA1057, or a drift pin, veneer calipers, and a rubber mallet between 8 and 16 ounces in weight. There are four screws securing the trigger assembly and a set screw securing the stationary contact assembly that have integral nylon seals. These screws must be replaced during reassembly of the load buster tool and cannot be reused when reassembling the tool. Make sure you have these parts on hand before attempting the inspection procedure. Cleaning supplies you'll need to have on hand include soft lint-free cloths, liquid abrasive cleaner, a mild degreasing household detergent, a bottle brush, and an emery cloth. We'll also lubricate the load buster tool during reassembly and we'll need petroleum jelly, DC Molly GN lubricant, and Dow Corning DC 200 silicon oil, and appropriate lubricant applicator. We also recommend having a small selection of replacement parts on hand before starting the procedure. An inner tube seal, and a moving contact assembly. Before starting, it's good to remember that we'll be reusing most of the parts we're removing from the load buster tool later during reassembly. Designate a clean area to set the parts as work progresses. First, loosen the tube cover by tapping on it with a rubber mallet. Pry the cover until it fits over the end cap and remove. Then pull the end cap out until the load buster trips. Caution! Keep fingers clear of the end of the chassis when tripping the load buster. The contact tube is spring-loaded and will move quickly towards the trigger assembly. Failure to keep fingers clear could cause minor injury. Push the inner tube back inside the chassis until only the end cap is showing. Hold the lock nut steady with the wrench to prevent it from spinning. Then, loosen and remove the set screw, and then the retaining screw, using a flathead screwdriver. Remove the end cap. Do not remove the lock nut. Remove the four screws which fasten the trigger assembly to the inner tube assembly and withdraw the trigger assembly. We recommend using a hand-driven screwdriver to loosen the four screws. A power-driven screwdriver may damage the trigger assembly. Withdraw the moving contact assembly and slide off the bearing. Then, carefully withdraw the orange inner tube assembly from the chassis. Unscrew and remove the silencer. Using a mallet and a screwdriver or other pry tool, tap the retaining ring with the mallet and screwdriver until there is enough room between the ring and the anchor assembly to fit the head of the screwdriver. Then insert the screwdriver into the gap and pry out the ring. Use care not to mar the surface of the inner tube assembly. The anchor assembly can then be easily removed. Remove and discard the set screw on the side of the inner tube assembly using a 5 32 inch Allen key. Then withdraw the stationary contact assembly. Remove the chassis cover by prying the cover equally on both sides and sliding it off the chassis. This can be tricky, so make sure to brace the tool on your workbench to avoid slipping when removing the chassis cover. Unscrew and remove the bearing retainer from the chassis and remove the inner tube sealing and bearing. Unscrew the contact tube from the moving contact assembly 
using a drift pin or SNC spanner wrench NA1057. Remove the tube. This completes disassembly of the load buster tool. Now we'll inspect and clean the load buster tool. Examine the trigger to make sure the spring is working and that the key is still securely in place. Look for evidence of excessive wear, broken springs, burning or pitting of any part of the assembly. If wear is found, the entire trigger assembly should be replaced. After inspecting the trigger, we'll look at the moving contact assembly. Remove any surface carbon deposits from the trailer and the moving contact using water and an abrasive household cleaner. Rinse and dry the assembly after cleaning. But do not submerge it in water or cleaning liquid. Polish the moving contact with an emery cloth if necessary. Then, pull both ends of the assembly to extend the spring. Examine the flexible cable inside the spring for signs of wear or fraying. Make sure it is securely connected at both ends. Using a caliper, check the diameter of the trailer at several points along its length. If the diameter is 0.650 inches or less, at any point besides the chamfered ends, or if the flexible cable is frayed, SNC recommends replacing the moving contact assembly, inner tube assembly, stationary contact assembly, guide bearing, and silencer at the same time. Note that the moving contact assemblies manufactured prior to August 2002 that have a red dot on the end of the trailer can be operated 500 to 1,000 times before inspection and maintenance are required. Tools with moving contact assemblies with a blue dot on the trailer can be operated 1,500 to 2,000 times before inspection and maintenance are required. Now let's look at the inner tube assembly. Minor scratches on the inner tube assembly are allowable. Look for any scratches that could hinder the travel of the inner tube seal along the surface of the inner tube. Tubes with rough scratches or gouges should be replaced. Remove surface carbon deposits from the liner of the inner tube assembly using water and a liquid abrasive type household cleaner applied with a bottle brush. Thoroughly rinse and dry the assembly immediately after cleaning. Do not soak the inner tube assembly in water or cleaning solution. Do not repaint the tube. Then examine the inner tube seal to make sure the seal is round, the gasket material is free from cracks and is even in shape. Replace the seal if necessary. Next, we'll look at the stationary contact assembly. Inspect for extreme pitting, erosion, or cracking. Remove any carbon deposits using water and a liquid abrasive type household cleanser. Thoroughly rinse and dry the assembly immediately after cleaning. Polish with an emery cloth if necessary, but avoid filing, which could change the dimensions of the assembly. Examine the steel ring inside the contact assembly. It should be round, and the trailer end of the moving contact assembly should slide in the stationary contact easily. Replace the stationary contact assembly if it is bent. Next, we'll examine the anchor assembly. The assembly is spring-loaded and should snap back when pulled. Polish the anchor assembly with an emery cloth to remove pitting. If severely pitted, burned, or if the spring does not work, the anchor assembly should be replaced. Next, we'll look at the latch and hook frame assembly. Examine the latch and look for excessive wear on the latching surface. The surface should be flat. Check that the latch's spring action is in good working order. Replace the latch if it is damaged. Then look at the hook frame assembly. The hook frame is made up of three parts, the pole ring hook, the pivot contact, and the pivot. Make sure the pole ring is straight and in good condition. Then check that the spring in the pivot contact is working properly and that the pivot moves both back and forth and side to side. Replace the hook frame assembly if any damage is found. Pull the hook frame assembly away from the chassis and inspect the springs. Replace them if damaged or severely corroded. The entire assembly should also rotate freely side to side. This is a critical joint. If the hook frame assembly does not rotate freely, it may be necessary to replace the chassis. 
Contact your nearest SNC sales office for more information. The chassis can be cleaned with a soft cloth and household detergent, such as dish soap. While cleaning, examine the shunt strap that runs alongside of the chassis. It should be in good condition and not pitted or corroded. The strap can be replaced if necessary. Then look at the bearing and bearing retainer for evidence of damage. Clean with a soft cloth. Replace if necessary. Last, inspect the silencer to make sure the gasket, also called the silencer snubber, is in good condition. Look inside for evidence of corrosion or wear. Make sure the mesh is in good condition. Then, push the pin to actuate the counter mechanism. Make sure the counter number advances each time the pin is pushed. This concludes the inspection of the Load Buster Load Brake Tool. To reassemble the Load Buster Load Brake Tool, first insert the stationary contact into the inner tube assembly, lining up the hole in the stationary contact with the inner tube assembly's tapped hole. Use a 5 32nd inch Allen key to install a new socket head set screw. Apply a thin coating of silicone oil to the surface of the inner tube assembly. Then slide the bearing retainer onto the inner tube assembly, followed by the inner tube seal. Make sure the flared edge is pointing toward the stationary contact. Use care to avoid damaging the seal. Using a twisting motion, work the inner tube seal onto the inner tube assembly. Use care going over the latch notch on the inner tube assembly. Then, slide the bearing on the inner tube assembly. Insert the inner tube assembly into the chassis, lifting the resting latch to provide clearance for the inner tube. Thread the bearing retainer firmly onto the chassis and then reinstall the chassis cover. To install the anchor assembly, draw the inner tube out a few inches. Position the anchor assembly so that the key on the anchor assembly engages the slot in the inner tube assembly. Once it's fully seated, install the retaining ring. The retaining ring is concave. Position the ring so it cups downward towards the anchor assembly. Then using a hammer or mallet, tap the ring into place. Then secure the silencer onto the end of the inner tube assembly. If the silencer has metal threads, apply a thin coating of petroleum jelly to the threads. Next, screw the contact tube onto the moving contact assembly. Use the SNC spanner wrench to hold the assembly steady while tightening the threads. Then slide the guide bearing over the open end of the contact tube. Apply a light coating of DC Molly GN paste to the trigger end of the moving contact assembly. Insert the moving contact assembly into the inner tube assembly. Trailer end first, making sure that the guide bearing is seated in the inner tube assembly. Apply a light coating of DC Molly GN paste to the latching area of the trigger. Extend the moving contact assembly. Rotate the anchor assembly to center the anchor with the pull ring hook. Align the guide pin on the trigger assembly with the slot on the chassis. Depress the trigger and attach the trigger assembly using new hardware to the inner tube assembly. Position the end cap and secure it to the moving contact assembly using the retaining screw and set screw. Tighten the set screw last.
Apply a light coating of petroleum jelly to the threads of the end cap and screw the end cap firmly onto the chassis. Install the tube cover. It's important to operate the tool several times to make sure that the trigger and resetting latch perform properly. Optionally, with a force gauge, check that the trip force is between 20 and 27 pounds for Loadbuster model 5300R3 and 20 to 29 pounds for model 5400R3. We hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please contact your local SNC sales office.